Welcome back to my channel, TechTutor. Today we're going to talk about Flyway. It's a great tool for migrating your databases. It allows you to be consistent. You just add the SQL scripts, it'll run. It'll know if it's already run those scripts. It allows you to move from one environment to the next to have consistent databases. So let's get into it now. Let's get started by taking a look at this POM file I created. I used the Spring Initializer tool to create it, and I'll put a link to that in my description. We're also going to be using version 2.4.0 of the Spring Boot Starter Parent. This will manage our dependencies. You can see the group artifact inversion that I've also designated for this project. And then further down here, we're using Java version 11. And then you can see that we're also using the Spring Boot Starter dependency, which again, the version of that is being managed by the parent. The Spring Boot Starter Web dependency, this also will make sure that we have a web server that gets started so that it will, it'll keep running after we start it on port 8080 by default. You're going to also need the Spring Boot Starter Data JPA dependency. This will allow you to easily connect to your database with entities and repositories. It'll also automatically look for the Flyaway dependency. So if you include the Flyaway dependency, this Spring Boot Starter Data JPA dependency will look for a Flyaway file inside of db.migration, and I'll get to this shortly. Additionally, we're also going to want to include this Postgres dependency so that way Spring knows how to interact with our database because it needs some of the Postgres drivers. Now let's move on to our Docker Compose file. If you haven't seen my video on how to get started quickly with Docker and Postgres, this is coming from that. I'll also link that as well. Basically, you're going to say that you want to use the Postgres image. You always want to restart the container if there's an issue. You're going to expose the ports 5432 from inside the container to outside the container so that way your server can access it. And then these are optional configuration values. So we're going to set the Postgres user as TechTutor, the Postgres password as password, and the name of the database as demo. And I'll also link the image information inside of the description so that way you can take a look at what else you can configure with this image. Next, let's take a look at this SQL file I created to configure our tables with Flyaway. So I have named it v1 underscore zero underscore zero double underscore init underscore demo dot SQL. So Basically, this is a naming convention that Flyaway understands. I will put a link to this in the description as well. It's for SQL-based migrations. The prefix should always be V if you're doing versioned migrations. And then you're going to have the version number, which can be with dots or underscores. Separate as many parts as you like, as they say in their documentation. And then it has to have two underscores after the version number. Then you can put a description, which you can write this description with underscores or spaces, and then it has to end with dot SQL. What I have here is just one SQL command, which will create a table if it does not exist. It'll make the ID the primary key, and it will also be a serial type, so that way it'll automatically increment. There'll be another alternate ID that is a varchar. And lastly, a created variable, which will be a timestamp. You can do multiple table creations. You can even do indexes in here. Um, if you want me to go into further detail, I can do that in a future video. But for this video, we'll just keep it simple to get you started quickly. There's nothing special that we're doing at the Flyaway application class, so we'll just leave that as is. And now lastly, our application YAML. Spring will automatically wire in your data source as long as you put the URL, the JDBC path of Postgres, localhost because we're running localhost, the port, and the name of the database. Then all you need again is the username and password. These can be passed in in a different way as environment variables. So that way you don't have to actually pass this in in a way where everybody could read it or you wouldn't want to probably push this to a repository this way. You could use 
Docker secrets, Amazon secrets. There's different ways to do this. You could wire in your password through code, but in this video, we won't get into that. And additionally, you should know that Spring has also made it to where you can actually add individual Flyway credentials, because for this particular video, we're using the same user to access our database as we would to modify our tables with Flyway, but you might not wanna do that in your project. So there's additional properties that can be set, and we can go over those if you're interested. Just let me know in the comments. I can always just tell you in the comment or make a, a video on it in the future if you're interested. Next, let's go ahead and spin up our database using Docker. Now you can either open this up in a terminal separately, or it could be as easy as opening it within a terminal inside of IntelliJ. So we'll just do it that way for now. Right click on this Docker Compose, say open in terminal. That will open the, the path to that Docker Compose file. So now, if you want to spin up the Docker Compose file, Docker Compose up dash D. Now, if you don't have the image downloaded, it will actually end up downloading the image for the Postgres database, but I already have it. And so it started a lot quicker than it will for you most likely. But once you do this, this is how it's gonna look. It stood up the database. And now let's go over to dBeaver and we'll see that the database now exists. As you can see in dBeaver, I've actually already connected to this database before, so it is saved for me, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. If I edit connection here, you have to put the local host, host, the port number, the name of the database, the user and password that you've created. And if you want to test that, then you could say test connection. It should confirm that you're able to connect to your database. And you'll see here also that the database exists. Now there's no tables here, but I was able to successfully connect to it. And now the reason why there's no tables is because we have not run our server yet. And after we run our server, it'll go ahead and it will run the flyaway script. After it runs that flyaway script, we should expect to see tables. So let's go run our server right now. In order to run it, just go ahead and right click flyaway application and click run. You can see in the logs here that it successfully applied one migration to the schema public. And now it's running on port 8080. Let's go ahead and go back to dBeaver. Let's refresh this database. And now you can see there's two tables. There's the demo table and the flyaway schema history. So let's go ahead and open the SQL editor. Let's look at what demo table has. It now has a column for ID, an alt ID, and a created column, just like I showed in our SQL script. That's what we were expecting it to create. Additionally, Flyway will create that schema history table. As you can see here, the rank is the order it has installed each of these SQL scripts from. The version, there's a description which came from our naming of our file as well. The type, the name of the script file, there's a checksum so that way it knows if it has executed the file or not. The user who it ran this SQL file as, when it was installed, how long it took, and whether it was successful or not. This is basically how Flyway keeps track of which SQL files it has already run. So if you add other SQL files into your project, it will not keep rerunning them. It will only run the new ones. And if you wipe away your database or if you wipe away the flyaway schema, it's going to think it needs to actually run this again. So again, this is how it keeps track. You can tear down your database and bring it back up and it will not have this table here. So obviously it'll go ahead and create everything from scratch the moment you rerun your server again. So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and tear down our database really quick. So we will stop our program. We'll go into terminal, and now docker ps will show that the image is running. If you do docker compose stop, it'll just stop the image from running. It will not wipe out the database. 
But if you do down dash V, it'll wipe out the volume, deleting all of your database information. And so now if you went back into dBeaver and you refresh this, you'll see here that it was not able to connect to localhost 5432. That's because the database is not up and running right now. It is gone. Now let's go ahead and spin that database back up so that way we can connect to it again. Just spin it back up, docker, compose, up, dash D again. And now let's go back to dBeaver. Let's refresh. You can see that it was able to connect to the database again, but the tables are gone. And then lastly, just to wrap everything up, let's go ahead and run it again. And you can see that once again, it validated the migration. Refresh this, you'll see the tables are there again. So this makes it a repeatable process to where if you wanted to migrate from one environment to the next, let's say that you had one server that was your dev server, you could then have these scripts in place to where once it runs in your dev server for the first time, it'll create the same tables. And then once it runs in your QA server, it'll create the same tables that are in dev and so forth. This allows you to make a very repeatable process for applying scripts of SQL to create database tables, indexes, or whatever information you need for SQL. I find this to be a very useful tool, again, for migrating from one environment to the next to keep things consistent. Now let's go back to our IntelliJ. And as you can see, it really did not take that many files in order to get this up and running at a very basic level. Now the thing is, if you want to interact with your database, you're going to want to utilize the Spring Data dependencies to set up repositories and entity classes. I can get into that in a further video, but for this video, I hope this gets you across to the basics, all you needed to stand up a database, create your initial tables, add scripts to create more tables down the line, and keep everything consistent with repeatable migrations. That wraps up our introduction video on Flyway. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to address them. If you, there's any videos you'd like to see, also let me know in the comments. And please like and subscribe for future content.